I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. And that should be well known to be the introduction for our good friend Rick Thompson. Bringing us the news from the Compassion Chronicles. Rick, how are you tonight? I'm doing fantastic. How's everybody doing? Hanging in there. This, Hanging in there. I was very excited to hear some of the news that you talked about in your uh, in your rant, Michael. Congratulations on uh, on some of the things that you were successfully able to do for your clients. Uh, this is the news. It's August 15, 2013. A New Jersey father pressed Governor Chris Christie to approve a measure expanding the availability of medical marijuana to children at a campaign stop on Wednesday. That's just yesterday. Brian Wilson, whose two-year-old daughter Vivian suffers from Dravet syndrome, uh, confronted the governor to ask him why he was delaying a decision on a law passed by the New Jersey legislature that would allow children like Vivian to more easily receive medical marijuana. Please don't let my daughter die, Governor, Wilson said. Don't let my daughter die. Christie said he'd arrive at a decision by Friday, tomorrow, telling Wilson, I wish the best for you, your daughter, and your family, and I'm going to do what I think is best for the people of the state. The proposed change to the law pushed by the Wilsons would impose strict limits on what kind of treatment can be administered, and it would require at least three doctors to sign up on prescriptions of medical marijuana for children. Dravet syndrome is the illness suffered by the little girl featured in the Dr. Sanjay Gupta documentary Weed, Michael mentioned in his rant, which is being replayed on CNN this uh, tomorrow night, Friday, at 10 p.m. In Florida, medical marijuana group says it's cleared the first major hurdle to get a proposed constitutional amendment on Florida's 2014 ballot that would be collecting enough voter signatures to trigger Florida Supreme Court's review of the initiative's language. Since July, People United for Medical Marijuana collected at least 110,000 signatures, more than the 10% needed to start the review. The group, you'll love this, nicknamed PUFM, P-U-F-M-M, will temporarily suspend its paid petition gathering drive until the court rules on the constitutionality of the proposal, which could not be misleading or cover multiple subjects. Why would they stop now? You got $150,000 a week to pay to collect signatures? The group treasurer asked rhetorically. He said Puffham plans to ask the court for an expedited review so the group can restart its petition drive sooner. They need to collect a total of 683,000 verified voter signatures needed by February 1st to get the measure on the 2014 November ballot. In Delaware, Governor Jack Markle said Thursday he's moving forward with a medical marijuana program after halting plans last year over fears that state officials could be subject to federal prosecution. Markle signed a medical marijuana bill in 2011, but halted implementation after federal officials indicated the people involved in cultivating and distributing marijuana could face civil fines or even prosecution. In a letter to lawmakers Thursday, Markle proposed a scaled-down pilot program involving a single state-licensed compassion center that would grow and distribute marijuana to eligible medical patients. The bill he signed in 2011 called for three such centers, one in each of Delaware's counties. Seeking to allay federal concerns about multiple large-scale privately operated industrial cultivation centers, Markle proposed that the Delaware Compassion Center be limited to growing no more than 150 plants and an on-site inventory of more than 1,500 ounces of marijuana. He also said regulations that the State Department of Health and Social Security Services rather would propose would require around-the-clock security monitoring at the center and include measures to ensure that dispenses marijuana only to eligible patients and caregivers. Delaware plans to draft regulations for selecting a vendor for this nonprofit compassion center by October 1st. They would issue a request for proposals early next year and then select a vendor by late April or May, meaning the center could be up and running as early as next summer. In Oregon, a bill that will expand the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program to allow licensing and regulation of medical marijuana dispensaries was signed into law Wednesday, yesterday, by Democratic Governor John Kitzheiber. The bill will give the Oregon Health Authority the ability to license, regulate, inspect, and audit medical marijuana dispensaries in the state. The Oregon Health Authority, who already oversees the existing Oregon Medical Marijuana Program, has until March 2014 to draft rules on security, testing, and other regulatory and licensing issues. Under the bill, dispensaries will be required to seek a license from the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. Dispensary operators will have to pass criminal background checks, log the amount of marijuana coming into their business, and verify that it's being grown by state-registered growers. The facilities will also have to comply with regulations for pesticides, mold, and mildew. 
each marijuana facility must pay a registration fee of 4000 according to the bill's fiscal note. If an estimated 225 facilities register, the state would receive about $900,000 in the next two years. Revenues from those fees will help offset the cost of creating and running the new registration system. Medical marijuana dispensaries already exist in Oregon, but are operating in a legal gray area. The OMMA, approved by voters in 1998, allow patients to grow their own medicine or have someone else do it for them, but does not provide for or prohibit medical marijuana dispensaries from operating. Sounds very familiar. This has led to very differences in toleration of dispensaries based on attitudes of local officials. Presently, an estimated 200 unlicensed cannabis dispensing facilities are operating throughout the state and an estimated 57,000 Oregonians are registered with the state to consume cannabis for therapeutic purposes. I'm Rick Thompson, and that's the news for August 15, 2013.